What's up, family and friends? Good afternoon and welcome to this live broadcast. How are you doing? How are you doing wherever you are? It's a great day. It's our day. And we are great. And we're also grateful to the nature to be here. So you're welcome. And uh, as usual, I'm encouraging you to join me as we seek and spread knowledge without fear or favor. I am here for you. You are here for me. We are the ones that matters. God, Jesus, Mary, all those um, mythological characters they recorded in the Bible, in the Quran, in the Torah, they does not matter. And those of you that believe or believe or belong in one of the Abrahamic religions, if you can read one of their books, which is Bible, he said that Abraham did not know us. Abraham don't know you, you. You that claim that you are a child of Abraham or son of Abraham through faith in Christ Jesus, Abraham don't know you. He don't. You have no blood relation with Abraham. You cannot become part of Abraham by faith either. So wake up. Abraham blessings are not yours. Your ancestral blessings are yours, especially you Africans. Everything your ancestors achieved, they are yours. They are called your heritage. And that's what we are doing, trying to wake you up so that you can recover your heritage. They keep blocking us. They keep blocking people who are spreading the knowledge of Africa. But they can never stop us. Uh, there's these uh, people that uh, shared the video of um, Ben Yekon on, on YouTube. YouTube blocked that account. Those videos disappear. But at least some of us that are always online, uh, we have been listening to them. So we are tapping from, we already tapped from it. You see, they cannot key knowledge. They cannot block knowledge. They cannot block it. No, it's, it's forever. Once you drop knowledge, it is it's forever. But if that knowledge is just in you, it is useless. But when you drop it, post it, no matter how, use any language. It doesn't matter whether you are English or good or not. Just drop the knowledge. Those of us who, are, who, who long for truth, who long for factual truth, will always take from me and enjoy it forever. It will never last. So they cannot stop us from waking our people up with factual truth. We will continue, whether it's Facebook, uh, YouTube, um, all, all the other social media out there, they cannot stop us. The sun must shine again. They can never. Africans will rise again and take their rightful place in the globe. So you are welcome. Uh, Nene, why Libya? <laughs> so all of us uh, all of you that are awakened please don't give up don't say maybe they will never wake up i have tried or no don't worry remember you used to you were once like that i was once a christian i was once a believer and the, one of the reasons why i want to share this i titled google is better than god is because somebody that know me wake up and began to attack me as usual. He's been attacking me on social media. Anytime he read my post or anytime he watch my video, he always attack me. He picked something. He has used my life to attack me. I've used my family because he knew me a little bit. Not that he know me like that, but his name is Douglas Arukwe. So in one of my Facebook groups, which is uh, the African Spirituality Group, so the video I made yesterday about uh, Bini, no God in Bini City. So he watched the video and this guy attacked me instead of maybe thinking or oh, using his brain. Uh, Osas, you're welcome. So this is what he commented on, uh, on, on that. This is the video I made last night, okay? So this is the comment, the, the first comment I, I read when I woke up in the morning was this. Douglas Elion Arukwe said to me, stupid man, <laughs> baby, stupid is stupid man. He said, you have knowledge by, by your idol God. I don't know what he means, but you know, I don't have God. I am God. God don't have God. So anybody that is telling me about that I have God or God created me, that person is stupid. So he, but he said, I am stupid man, that I have knowledge by 
by my idol God, but I cannot say correctly when Papa Edahosa died. You remember in that video, I said the, la the last time I saw that market that got burnt on Sunday, which God failed to, pray, to, to quench the fire, was when I went for Edahosa's burial. I said maybe 1996 or 1997, I don't know. So he picked on that one. You know, that's how they work. They can use your typo to attack you. They can use anything they think if they say it or if they throw it at the wall, it will stick. They will use it against you. And these people, you know, they think maybe they are doing that to silence you, but they don't know they are really doing it to motivate you. My haters motivate me, especially I did not mention their name in my post. I was talking about God and the Jesus and the, what religion, the havoc religion, is doing on our people and, cause, and calling our people to wake up. But they decide to attack me, fighting for that God, speaking for that God. They are stupid. Of, 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 of course, they are stupid. If you are fighting for God, who you believe to be almighty, you are stupid. If you are speaking for a God, who you believe to be almighty, you are stupid. Let that God speak for you. you can, a goat, a sheep, which you claim to be, does not fight for the lion. Lion fight for itself. You believe you are a sheep and your God is the lion. Then why are you fighting for that God? That God is supposed to be the one fighting for you. But if your God exists, that your God will love me. Because your God will know that I am doing the right thing. Waking people up and not exploiting you. and not asking you for your dime, for your cobble, for your toro, or for whatever money you have. I'm not asking you for that. As you can see, I'm still strong and young. Oh, the young man, hear me. Some of you here, I'm old enough to be your grandpa, but you see, <laughs> that's the side. So this guy begin to attack me, and everything I say in that video, every fast I mentioned, but this one is my, what I did, I said, maybe 96 or 97, maybe, maybe. That guy said, oh, you are God, you are not God, cannot tell you when it happened. Oh, blah, blah, blah. I didn't say God told me or God showed me in 1996 or 1907. This is my experience, which if I sit down and think, I will remember the actual year. And remember, it is year, it's not even date. Right? So that's where he picked on. And um, and uh, I, 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 this is my re my first response. You know how I do. I always trust such people. I spend time to try to mock their God and mock them, and also try to open their eyes. Then when I when I feel like they don't they don't want they want to live and die ignorant, then you know I know I can block them or I can. I can just ignore them, deleting whatever comment that I'm making. So I said, Douglas, uh, Arukwe, blind, stupid, stammering idiot. This guy is a stammerer, and God has not fixed his tongue. He stammers. Let me tell you the first time I met the guy. I met the guy in 1998, 1998, in Lagos, when I came to pastor a church. No, when I, I was visiting a uh, visiting pastor, uh, Pastor Ike Chido in Lagos or John Lagos. So we used to meet in Divine Grace Church, the, the church that break away from um, Church of God by Reverend Abu. Reverend Abu was the owner of the church. So let me tell you something, something some of you don't know about me. So I used to come there, you know, when you come as a pastor, they always give you some minutes to share, you know, they, they call it like, a, you know, charge people, you know, you charge the, the brethren, you know, speak something, take some place uh, from the Bible and just say something, you know, to motivate the people, especially time, uh, tithe, tithe and offering time, you know, you can say something that will move the, uh, the congregation. So... So when they see the white minister, it happened that Pastor Ike decided to resign. Maybe they were treating him bad, then he decided to resign and start his own ministry. So the, the, the elders of the church came to me. I did not apply to be their pastor. They came to me because they see how I often minister, right? And I, I moved to Lagos now. I moved to Lagos because 
the first, the time uh, the Grand Ministry sent me letter of invitation for me to come for a seminar or conference in America, right? So I was in on it. I got the letter, and the seminar ended yesterday. So I said, "Well, and I've been planning to travel abroad. So this is how I will be in on it." The letter arrived in Lagos many, I think, some months or time ago, but they did not send it on it until the program is over. So that's how I decided to relocate to Lagos. Not that God asked me to go to Lagos and pastor any church or do any work of God. No, I made that decision. It's not God telling me anything. But I already know that I will travel abroad. But how it will happen, I don't know. But I was in my village, Ibubumuchu, where I saw myself travel abroad. Okay. So that's how I relocated to Lagos. So these elders of the church came to me and... Uh, asked me to pastor them. They said, I should write application. In the, we sat down, they telling me that. I say, you know what? No, I don't, I don't believe in that. If you know my faith when I was a Christian, oh man, you will love me more. I said, I don't believe. I believe God called me. And I am a man of God, a servant of God. I always use servant, not all this man. I'm a servant of God, evangelist. And if it is the work of God, I don't need application. I don't need to apply for it. I don't need to write anything. It's just a paper which can be torn. Do you hear that? That's how they put the application aside. I did not write any application to pastor them. And most of them are elder than me. Remember, they are elders of the church, of that church. Yes. They housed me. They took care of me also as their pastor. As young as I am, and some of them were wondering, they said, even the owner of the church, Reverend Abo, he's still alive from Osaka. He lives in Abuja, but he's, he break uh, that church, the group of people that believe in his ministry in Lagos, break away from that church of God, Ojo. If you see the Ojo headquarters of church of God, that's where they break away from. And if you know Fidelity Bank today in Ojalaba International, that church was opposite that Fidelity Bank. But you know, today, market people has taken over. You know, the apostolic church is by the side also. So I was patrolling them. If you know Ole, o, o, is it Olems or Onyen's hospital? I've forgotten. But the wife is one of the main people in that church. The wife, all, the wife... That woman worshipped me. That, that woman see me as real man of God. L listen, that woman sometimes will even invite me in her bedroom to ask me questions about the Bible. There's nothing romantic about it. Not, I'm not even thinking about it. She's not thinking about that. But she saw the fire that is in me, the truth. When people that love the truth see the truth in you, they will always come to you. But you know, our mind always go to sex and all that. And the one young woman, not that young like that, in that church, I think she was a, you know, one of the people running the church. She got jealous. She thought I am sleeping with this woman. She began to gossip. She said, uh, the, you know, the way I'm moving with this man, blah, 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 blah. I said, I laugh. I laugh a lot. They always think that. When they see a, a man and a woman talking the way they don't like, they, they are suspecting them. The Holy Spirit will not reveal it to them. All. <laughs> and they are, they are Holy Ghost filled. But then we begin to talk. Talking nonsense. All right. So, Douglas. This Douglas that is attacking me today is the guy I used to share pulpit with. You know, we minister. I know it's a stammerer. But literally, I can beat him up. You know, I am older than him and I'm stronger than him. And I know more than him. I know the Bible more than him. I know the way he used to operate. All that, right? And I know when he married, I think, I don't know if he came to my wedding or day because I did my wedding in that uh, Lagos, um, in that uh, Divine Grace Mission. Okay, if, I, if you see my, my marriage certificate that time, is that's the name of the church you see there so that's how douglas come to know me but when i entered alaba international remember so i resigned from that church i started my own ministry right but i said wait a minute why would i be cajoling people or trying to pray for people or see things for people for for me to make money why instead of me using the name of god or jesus to be robbing people taking money from people i rather go back to business when i was doing business with my father i was doing good 
So I was not struggling like that in business. That's how I plan to enter Alaba International. How many of you know about Comesta? Comesta, the man uh, um, evans the kidnapper. Kidnapped and they requested for two million dollars. So, and they, they pay for it for his release. He's my ex in law. Yes, my ex wife was from that family. If I'm a man that is after money, that I will not do anything to offend that per such person. That man, the first store or first shop he opened in overhead section of uh, Alaba uh, ele electrical material. I'm the one. He used to open it. I ran it. In fact, when he traveled to China, that's when now this Samsung phone came out newly. So I bought that phone. And when he came as my in-law, so I show him my phone. Do you know what he said? What he asked me? A married man. He asked me who gave me the phone. Who gave me the money to buy the phone? I say, oh, within me, I say, see a grown man like me. Another man is asking me who give me money to buy the phone. I say, this guy don't know me, you know. And I go on and and did my thing. I think later he even locked me up, accusing me of uh, using his receipts to make my own money and all that. I still came out because I, I, I was locked up in Panty, Lagos. Panty is, I think, in similar area. That's where I was locked up. I, I think I spent the weekend there and uh, maybe before the other weekend, I was bailed out by a lawyer through some friends that went to him. So in Lagos is where I know this Douglas. This Douglas know me first time as a man of God. He, he he respected me as a man of God. We share. When I come around, at least when you see when you see somebody that is that know better than you, you you are humble. And he always like that in my presence. Or uh, when we gather, we we see him as our young uh, younger minister. So you know we treat him as such. But since Douglas begin to see that I don't believe in Jesus anymore, I don't believe in God anymore, and my posts are public, I am not doing it in, in secret. He decided to be attacking me. You are welcome. You are free to attack me. I don't practice forgiveness. I practice fairness. The way you attack me is the way I will attack you. The way you talk to me is the way I will talk to you. So that's how this guy, he has been following me. Some, I think some of my Facebook accounts, he, he unfriend me there or block me there. But he found out I have many, I have many Facebook accounts. Because I'm living in America, no matter how you do, I can open. And if Facebook keep blocking me, I can pay money to open an account they cannot block. Because I'm paying for it. <laughs> the reason why they're blocking me anyhow is because I'm not paying. They asked me to boost my post. I'm not boosting anything. Uh, keep I'm not uh, truth must be free. The truth in the whole world belongs to every one of us. And we're not supposed to be selling the truth. We're not supposed to be buying the truth. We're not supposed to be exploiting people for the truth. So that's how Douglas, all the Douglas know about me is that I am a man of God. He used to call me the man of God. He used to call me the man of God. But this guy now is no longer calling me the man of God. He's calling me the man of Satan. Because I decided to change my faith. I have not changed. It's still the same me seeking the truth and spreading it. It's still the same me standing with the truth no matter who is angry no matter who is offended i have not changed the same way my parents bombed me that's the same way i still remain till tomorrow but my faith has changed i don't i no longer operate by faith i operate by facts i no longer operate by forgiveness i operate by fairness with it would it say so this is what my brother, he's an evil man, Douglas Aruque, my brother. But because this useless Jesus in the Bible commanded his disciples to hate their loved ones for him, Douglas decided to hate me. I have not offended him. In fact, when I was doing business in Alaba International, 
this guy came to my store, the first email address that I have with Yahoo. I gave him money to go to Cyber Cafe and open that account for me. I have gave this guy my money. He has not given me a dime, a kobo, since he knew me. So no matter how he see it, I am better, I am greater than him now, yesterday, and tomorrow. But he decided to attack me. A guy I have not offended. I did not sleep with his wife. I did not rape his daughter or his wife. I did not rape him. I did not do him any bad thing. I did not take his money and say I will do something and fail to do it. No. We were friends until I switched from faith to facts. But he chose to remain and die in faith. So he attacked me and the facts. So this is what I reply. Blunt, stupid, stammering idiot. If I can say the actual year the host had died on air, I can just go back and get it. But can you can can you go to your useless, all-knowing, almighty God to know your actual creation day? No. Why? Because you are a stupid idiot by faith in imaginary beings. Stammering goats. Google can also help you to know when a host had died. But your useless Holy Ghost cannot help you know anything you need to know in reality. Use Google rather than the Bible. When somebody make a post you don't agree with or you you seem not to get what the person is saying, why not use Google? Like I said, I think maybe the host had died in 1996 or 1997. Then you pick it to speak against me. Why can't you use Google? Or you can ask people around. That doesn't make make it mean that the truth I am sharing is a lie. Because you cannot attack the factual truth I'm sharing, you decided to attack me. You saying, oh, it's my failure. No, that I cannot, uh, I cannot remember something doesn't mean I am not perfect. It doesn't mean it's my failure. It's not. I can always go back and get it. What I don't understand, I can spend time to understand it and understand it. Don't let anyone, don't let anyone believe to you. Don't let anyone silence you. Don't let anyone make you to shut up when you know the truth. Speak it with all boldness. Whether you know how to put words together or you're dumb, but you know what you are saying. The people of like mind, men of goodwill, will always understand you. But those ones who have decided to be fake fools will always attack you, even when you are trying to deliver them and their family. Then, thanks to Google, because I will not sit down and begin to tell, okay, in 1990s, I was here, I was there. Because when I had the death of Edahosa, I was traveling from Lagos to Onesha. So I was in a bus. Think, either we are in the Benin. Uh, yeah, we are in the Benin. You know, when you are in the public bus in Nigeria, anywhere the bus is driving by, people have something to say about those places. You know, when you drive it, they say, you see this house in Benin? Blah, 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 blah. They begin to tell you all the nonsense about how the witches are praying there and all that, you know? They tell you don't do this, so we are in the beginning. Oh, la, 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 all that. So some people will stick their head out in the beginning so that one witch or wizard will not, will not beat them or something like that. All right, so, <laughs> so I use Google. You see, I Google it. Google even make it better. Hear what I find in Google. I say, even when I type my when, it's, I don't know it was web. It was typo. I, I wrote... Web, I wanted to write when a Dahos had died. That's the question I asked Google. But hear what Google said to show you that Google is better than God. Google can correct you. Google can correct your typo and bring some things that it, it, uh, that it thinks that's what you are asking for or what you are driving at. Unlike God, God cannot correct the people he made. God cannot correct his creation. And you see chaos everywhere. And they tell you that God exists. 
Yeah, what Google said. It said, show you results for when a Dahosa died. Hear what it said. Benson Edahosa, date of slash date of death, March 12, 1998. March 12, 1998. That time I have not started pastoring that church in Lagos. And I started pastoring that church in Lagos in 1998 when I made this Douglas. Now, instead of him out of caring about me, if did that guy still believe in anything about care, he would have said, no, Shed, it was 1998. He thought he, thought he would use it to ridicule me. But he don't know, before you ridicule me, I ridicule myself first. You see, when some people came and tell me, oh, you used to be a thief, I said, I, I've been saying that. Everybody told me I used to be very bad. I used to smoke, I used to woman, everything. I was very bad. In those days, you cannot walk out in the street unless you are part of us. You know when Okro was running in Onisha? I was one of them in Fege Onisha. Yeah, Okro. And many of you, your father, your mother now, they can't step out. When they, when they see people are like us are walking down the street, they hide. <laughs> but when you see me now, with, after smoking it with my eyes, I always carry hanky. <laughs> Jewelries, wristwatch, you know, in the nap wind, all that shit. Google tell me that in the house, I died March 20, uh, 12, 1998. And he gave me more information. He said, Born September 11, 1938, Bini City, Nigeria, place of death, Nigeria. I asked Google, and Google gave me the information I needed even much more. Some of you, somebody says something or blow one grammar, they throw you off balance when you have dictionary, you have Google, you have such engine you can use to inform yourself and show that person that you know what you are saying. Mm. You need to know what they are coming to do. But also understand you were prepared for this before they were conceived. It is beyond their grip. It is beyond their grasp. It is beyond, the, beyond everything they stand for. You need to use Google Answer. God answers not. God cannot answer anyone. Ask Google and Google will answer you. But ask God, God will never answer you. Google is real. God is not real. The only thing that is connected Google and God is this man made both of them. Google is positive. God is useless. Google is real. God is useless. You need to understand, my people, whatever question you need the answer to, you can get. Don't settle for the lie they tell you and until the last day. That's when you will know or that's when you understand. No, don't settle for that. If God exists, know God now. When I say know God now, not in your head. See God as God is physically. Anyone that tells you God is a spirit is lying. Anyone that tells you God is infinite is lying. Anyone that tells you God is eternal is lying. Anyone that tells you God is all-knowing or unchangeable is lying. All that is what you are. But they use religion to detach you from yourself. For one imaginary being, some of them says in heaven and in their heart. Religious force, especially Christians, churchgoers, they hate Google search. They tell you Google does not have all the answer. The Bible does. Which Bible? Written how many years ago? You cannot even see private jet in the Bible. You cannot see flash screen television in the Bible. You can't see television in the Bible. You can't. Many things you have in today, you cannot find them in the Bible. And they tell you Bible will have the answer. 
when you are gadget uh, uh, spoil in your house or break, you try to use the Bible. You go to Bible and search. Okay, how to fix this thing? But if you can go to Google, Google will even direct you to YouTube where you will see the video how to fix things that break in your house. And your God cannot do uh, FaceTime. Your God cannot do video chat. Your God cannot show himself. In this time and age, you are still going, running, running back, resorting to the book they wrote about two, many thousands years ago or some thousands years ago. And you don't see you are operating in blind faith. Christians, Bible believers, keep insisting that the Bible have all the answers you need. When in reality it's a lie. There is no answer to your question in the Bible. There's no answer to the, to, there's no solution to your problem in the Bible. You hear what this stupid person asked me? Who created the person that created Google? Where are you created? Where are your parents? God did not create you. A God and goddess created you. Your father is a God. Your mother is a goddess. Both of them created you. You know your father and your mother. You can see them, right? Or are they dead? If they are dead, you say they are dead. You believe God created you. Idiot. Tell me, show me that God. Tell me the death that God created you. You celebrate your birthday because your parents gave birth to you. Not because you dropped from the sky. Not because God created you. No God created. God did not create the person that created Google. The, who, the, his parents gave birth to him. And they say it's an atheist so, or gay man. I think they, I don't know they say it's gay or atheist, something like that. And we are using it. Bible cannot answer your real question. That's why I always challenge Bible believers using Jeremiah 33 verse 3. He said, call to me, I will answer you and show you great and mighty things which you know not. And I challenge you that believe in that God of the Bible. Ask God about your creation day. That God will never answer you. But ask Google the day you were born. Just put how old you are now. Google will tell you. <laughs> he will tell you the day. God cannot do that. Holy Spirit cannot do that. Bread. You did not receive bread from any God. This stupid Oseo Bihunu. Please get out. Get out of my post. Please, please get out. I don't entertain sheep and ghosts in my post anymore. Please get out. Bread. You did not pay for any bread. Nobody gave you bread. And you can stop breathing by yourself. No God can stop you from stopping yourself from breathing. Because God did not give you bread. Bread is part of nature. The air you breathe in is part of nature. You are part of nature. Your parents gave birth to you and you are the one keeping yourself alive. When they want to put you in a place where there is no air, you begin to cry, you begin to fight for your life. Why are you fighting? To keep yourself alive. All this nonsense religion fed us with this garbage. God gave you life. The bread you have, God gave you. God will take it. God cannot give bread. God cannot take bread. You are saying all that nonsense because of what you read in that lying book called the Bible. But use Jeremiah 33 verse 3 to see there's no reason for you to go to school. There's no reason for you to say you don't know anything. You are God supposed to reveal everything to you. You want me to show you another place in the New Testament when you deny that one is Old Testament. Luke chapter 12, verse 2. Jesus said, whatever is hidden will be made known. Whatever is hidden, it was secret will be revealed. Whatever. And you know, I always challenge you guys that believe in this God, in this Jesus nonsense. How about the Malaysian airline that got missing? The date, many years now, no man of God, no God has revealed the whereabouts of that 
flight. See, today, many people who are there, all of them vanished. Maybe they went to heaven. <laughs> Come on, wake up, my people. And love is enough of all this illusion of God Almighty, illusion of Jesus the Lord and Savior, illusion of, of salvation of God, illusion of gospel of Jesus Christ. They are all lies. It is time you wake up. Your brain is not a gift, it is part of you. You are a spirit. You are not a spiritual being. You are infinite. You are eternal. You are unchangeable. You cannot change, but you can change your faith. You can change your condition. You can change your situation. How about John 14, 14? He said, whatever, here. What you are Jesus said in John 14 14. Hear what Jesus said in the Bible. If you ask anything in my name, I will do it. Ask Jesus to show up here. Let's see if Jesus can do it. You that believe in Jesus. Jeremiah 33 verse 3. He said, call me. I will answer you and show you what the great and mighty things you don't know. John 14, 14, he said, hey, if you ask anything, he did not say if you ask spiritual things. He did not say if you ask biblical things. He did not say if you ask religion. No, he said if you ask, if you can ask anything in his name he will do it jesus cannot pay your bills up despite all your prayers jesus cannot put food on your table despite all your prayers but you believe because they taught you that god jesus is better than you and the things of life you're supposed to be enjoying it is time you wake up, my people. Stop letting them fooling you and robbing you. But we are following them and defeating them with factual truth. That's why they will keep reporting us. But I tell them, report me to your God so I can kill that God if that God show up. The reason why God and Jesus cannot show up this place is because I will kill them if they show up. I will. Let them show up. Let me see. But you are the one talking, speaking for that God. Think or stink. Christians are like inmates, are like people in a waiting trial cell in prison. You know, there are different between people, the inmates, the, the real prisoners in prison, and those are waiting trials. The prisoners in prison at least enjoy more than people in a waiting trial. But Christians are like people in a waiting trial. You know that in, in they are locked up, waiting for Jesus to come and save them, waiting for their savior. That's how they are. And in that cell they are in, in that box they are in, they are claiming that God is favoring them in it. They are in locked up cell and they say God is favoring them in it. And they don't want to be free from it. They are waiting until the last trumpet sound. Trumpet in this time and age. <laughs> people are waiting for one trumpet to sound. When people are making alarm. And people are still waiting for trumpets. <laughs> trumpet is in your phone. <laughs> you can use it as your ringtone. Mm. Wake up my people. Stop. Uh, no, enjoying yourself in prison. You are a prisoner. You are a slave. You are there awaiting trial. A trial that will never happen. Free yourself. They lock you up there against your will. You are innocent. You are not a Christian. You are not a Muslim. You are not a Jew. You were converted by force, by indoctrination, by brainwashing. 
It's never your choice to be a Christian. It's never your choice to be a Muslim. It's never your choice to be a Jew if you're an African. You can use Google to know more about yourself. And when I'm talking about yourself, I'm talking about your ancestors. Your ancestors are in you and you are in them by blood. Blood is thicker than water. And blood speaks. The voice you are hearing and ascribing it to God or Jesus is the voice of your ancestors. Come on. I was once that stupid ascribing my call from my ancestors to God and Jesus because I was a Christian, a convert. It is time you wake up Africans. No God can speak to you. No Jesus can speak to you. Your blood can and do speaks to you. Christians are in, pre, in, in, in cell locked up and they are maintaining the lock. The lock is broken. They, they keep fixing it. No, put it away. They use their hands. They use their legs. They use their money, everything they have to keep the, the, the gate locked. We are waiting upon the Lord. They that wait upon the Lord that shall renew their strength, they shall mount up wings as like eagle in the cage. <laughs> They shall walk run and not fit in the cage. <laughs> they shall walk and not fit in the cage. All you are flying, all you are running, all you are walking, all you are waiting is inside that cage called Christianity. Dungeon of lies and deception. The valley of shadow of death. That's where you are and believing. Oh, God is good to me. I, it is well for, with me. And you see some of us that are breaking out of that prison and left that gate open for you to come out. You say, no, you fix it back. I love it here. Then you are calling us Antichrist. You are calling us devils. You are calling us Satan. I will make posts later. I said, listen, I am not a man of God because I am God. I am not a man of Satan because I am Satan. I am not a man of the devil because I am devil. I am not Antichrist because I am greater than Christ. Listen what I mean. When I said I am Satan, what is the meaning of Satan? Adversary. I am an adversary to uh, against lies, against slavery, against the oppressors who are oppressing my people. What? How about the devil? Devil, the accuser. I am accusing them rightly for oppressing my people. I'm accusing them rightly for believing a lie as the truth. You call me demon, a man of demon. No, I know I cannot be possessed by demon. I am demon. Demon simply means knowledge. You call me Lucifer. I mean, man of Lucifer. No, I'm not. I am Lucifer, light bringer, light carrier. I bring light to you, just as I am doing right now. The reason why I am all bold, speaking and mocking that God is because that God is bowed. It does not exist. And that God cannot make any sound. That God cannot answer you. The Google can answer you. I can answer you. Your neighbor can answer you. God cannot answer you. Christians, break away from that prison and stop entertaining your oppressors in that prison you are. When you say, God, I love you, I worship you, you are entertaining your oppressors. When you say, Jesus, I love you, you are my Lord and Savior, you are entertaining your, your, your oppressors. It's time you, you, get, you get out of that cell. You have been locked up. Your parents tell you it's a nice place to be. No, it's not. There's a place of freedom. And those of you that are living in abroad and talking against your ancestors or talking against people who are pointing you back to your ancestors, you say, let the past go. How about your village that you left to abroad? Why are you still traveling back to your village? Why are you saying, oh, no place like home. I miss my home. I miss that. But when we talk, we talk about your ancestors, ah, that's demonic. That's evil. We, are, we, are, we, are, we want us to go back to idol worship. It's time you wake up. 
wake up and begin to use your brain in that prison where you are locked up in that cell you are doing abominable things there robbing one another and fucking one another in the ass is it not what is going on in the lock up cells that's where you see all this homosexuality spread where men are fucking their fellow men in the ass even in, in, in that say you see some of them they are pastors there and when they get ready they have other men they are fucking in the cell and they are men of god the place you will see the most prayerful and most praiseful people is in prison cells morning prayer oh man morning prayer we think that's that prison door we just open and all of them free but after all that prayer files all that the, the, the warders or the correction officers will come and tell them what to do. They remain locked up. They cannot be free unless some men outside ordered it. The judge, the governor, people in power. It is not any God. If you believe God can touch anyone to set you free from prison, where was your God before they locked you up, before they arrested you? You are God, the God that, that did not prevent your arrest can never order your release. He cannot. It is people in power who ordered your arrest. They are the one also that will order your freedom. You see the story of Paul, they put the Bible in the Bible for you. They say, Paul and Silas, they pray, they sang, the Holy Ghost come down. You, are, you and your family have been praying and singing. The Holy Ghost has not come down anywhere to remove poverty, to remove sickness and disease. Nowhere. You are family, you and your family are still suffering. They said the Holy Ghost came, the, the, the foundation of the prison shake and the door open and the chains drop. And Paul said they are not living. It's a lie. If you have been locked up, you know there is no man locked up that will see the prison door open and not get unless that man is still, and that's how Christians are. The chains have dropped, but they want to remain in prison. No, we are not going anywhere. The people that put us here must come and take us out. Jesus put us in this prison. We are waiting for Jesus to come. <laughs> you see, that? it's in the Bible. It's your Bible. Paul was beaten. Him and Silas locked up. The Holy Ghost came down to set them free. <laughs> According to the Bible, the Holy Ghost set them free. The chains dropped. The, 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 the door opened. They said the, the guard saw that the door opened he took sorry to kill himself he said i'd rather die because they will kill me for these prisoners that escaped he was surprised he saw those prisoners still in, in that inside cell so what is the essence of the holy spirit coming down <laughs> to save the guard <laughs> so the holy spirit cannot save the guard without you being locked up and all that nonsense Sh shenanigan that went to that will happen why, why, why must your God prove? Like I see, I hear some Christians last time they made a post. They say, see, Muslims uh, converted to Christians after God healed their mother. But there are many Christians that are dying in hospital out of little sickness. God have not healed them. But you believe that as a woman was healed, then the whole family give their life to Jesus. But you see many Christians dying in their home, in the hospital. God has not healed them. You believe in all that. <laughs> you are like Paul and Silas. Your chain has dropped. Factual truth is here to set you free. But you say, no, I like this cell. God is favoring me. Yeah, God is good to me. I am waiting for Jesus to come and set me free. Set yourself free. Stop being in that jail like Paul and Silas. Waiting for Jesus to come and set them free. It is time you use Google to activate your brain because God Almighty is useless in reality, but you are real. My brothers, my sisters, you are real. Regardless your religion, regardless your faith, regardless your status, regardless your color, wherever you are, whether white or black, you are real. We are the one that can make things happen. It's not any God. But the reason why many of us are operating in that gullibility is because religion has rot our brain. You see educated people, people you think are supposed to know better, they're still talking about God. Many of them will celebrate Christmas tomorrow. Many of them are talking about Jesus Christ existed or born. 
why Jesus have not showed himself to any of them. These people can read. Yeah, they read it in the Bible, but the thickness of the Bible, you know, the thickness of the Bible is thicker than this. They cover their eyes. They cannot see. They cannot see that God does not exist. They cannot see that Jesus does not exist because if that God and Jesus exist, all of you will have one faith, one denomination, one, one, one denomination, one one doctrine, one everything, without having all these different doctrines, different faiths, different de denominations, and fighting. You when you on Sunday when you prepare to go to to the presence of your God, you pass how many churches along the road and go to your own. And after when you come back, you say all of you are worshiping one God. How can you be worshiping one God when you bypass all this one to the one over there? Do you know what you go through because of faith? How you suffer? Sometimes you want to eat the food you, you like. You say, no, my religion forbids it. Now, it's time you wake up, my people, and use your brain. Your brain is the greatest asset you have. If you can use your brain, you will no longer be a slave. You will no longer be a victim. You will no longer be suffering unnecessarily. You begin to live your life as you're supposed to live you are alive. It is time you wake up, my people. If you don't believe what I'm saying, or if you don't accept what I'm saying, it's right. I don't want you to believe what I'm saying. Research what I'm saying. I don't want you to just accept what I'm saying. Do your own research. Use Google. Use YouTube. We have many things we can use. We, we now have smartphones these days. What is the essence of you having smartphone when you are not smart? You think your phone is just for you to text, for you to make calls, or for you to see pictures online? No, use it to do research, spend time, read, and still reading. You see, sometimes I share long posts. It's not me writing them. It's what I read. Then I share it because the more I get the knowledge, the more I share it. It doesn't matter where I get it. All I know, I can read it, understand it. I have to share it. It is time you wake up, my people. Your life is good. Your life is fair. Your life is sweet. And your life is easy. Enjoy it. Peace. Mm -mm.